Chapter 2 discusses the chemical context of life. Again, be sure to go over your notes and compare them to the sections and pictures from your book. Section 1 discusses the elements of living things. An element is a substance made of only one type of atom, can't be broken down further chemically. 92 naturally occurring elements, about 25 or so are essential to life. Four of those make up about 96% of a living thing. Those four are oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. But those four don't just exist as free elements, they exist as parts of other things, known as compounds. For example, water. Water is made of oxygen and hydrogen, things like that. Now, section three discusses atoms and the parts that they're made of, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Here's a little chart. Here we have protons, neutrons, electrons, their electrical charge, their atomic mass, and where in the atom you will find them. Now, protons have a positive charge, electrons have a negative charge, neutrons are neutral. Both protons and neutrons have an atomic mass of one each. Electrons are said to have zero mass. They actually have a mass, but it's much, much smaller than that of a proton or a neutron. Protons and neutrons are found in the middle of the atom, the atomic nucleus, whereas the electrons orbit the nucleus in various levels. Now, the atomic number of an element, such as carbon or hydrogen or whatever, is the number of protons that the atoms have. All elements have their own atomic number. The atomic mass is the number of protons and neutrons that the element has. Okay? Now, section four talks about isotopes. Now, an isotope is a form of an element that has a different atomic mass. And it has to be in the number of neutrons because, after all, every element has its own atomic number. Now, some isotopes are radioactive. In this section, you can read that some isotopes can be helpful or harmful. They're helpful in terms of nuclear medicine and uh, PET scan imaging. They can be harmful in that the body can take them in just like it can their normal isotope, uh, but and treat it chemically the same, but can emit radiation and harm part of the body. Now, sections five through seven, I only give you cursory information on this. Stick to what I give you in the notes. Bonds are what connect atoms together to form molecules. Okay? Two basic types of bonds exist. Ionic bonds and covalent bonds. Ionic bonds are the attraction of oppositely charged ions or charged atoms. Now, if an atom gains or loses electrons, it's going to have a plus or a minus charge to it. Opposites attract. Salts are formed by ionic bonds. Most other stuff are formed by covalent bonds. Covalent means to share. So a covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons. So for example, here's a drawing of the water molecule. You have an oxygen with a covalent bond to a hydrogen. That's one shared pair of electrons. And you got another one over here, okay, represented by a dash. Now water is a little different and special. See, you have a sharing of electrons between the oxygens and the hydrogens, but they don't share equally. In other words, oxygen has a high electronegativity. It tends to be greedy when it comes to sharing electrons. So these electrons, which are orbiting around, are going to spend more time over here. So therefore, this end of the molecule is going to be more negative, and this end of the molecule is going to be more positive. So this makes this molecule polar, like the poles of a magnet. Now again, opposites attract. The positive end of one water molecule will tend to pull or attract to the negative end of the next. This red dashed line shows this attraction known as a hydrogen bond. This pulls the water molecules closer together and basically is responsible for everything you already know about water, the properties of water. For example, liquid water is cohesive. That is, the water molecules are close enough to remain a liquid despite being a small molecule. You have surface tension. Again, at the surface you have this alignment and it's a little bit stronger. Um, water also moderates temperature very well. It has a high specific heat, which means it takes a lot of heat to raise the temperature of water because to raise the temperature you've got to make the molecules move more and overcome these forces that are holding them together. So it also takes a lot of heat to evaporate water, to boil it off. Okay. So that's known as evaporative cooling. When water evaporates, it does remove heat. Now, um, and of course that's good for us because our bodies are made mostly of water. We want to balance our water, uh, our body temperature. Another property of water, ice floats. Very unusual. Usually solids are more dense and will sink in their liquids. But ice expands as it freezes because as the molecules slow down to become frozen, 
it will form up to four hydrogen bonds with all its neighbors, and when it's doing that, they can only be so close together, force them to spread out. Now, if that weren't true, then all the ice would sink and all of the lakes and oceans would be permanently frozen from a few feet down and that's no good. Water also dissolves stuff well. Okay? Water can dissolve salts, water can dissolve sugars, um, other polar molecules such as sugars. So things that dissolve well in water are known as hydrophilic, but not everything dissolves well in water. Things like oils are hydrophobic because they're nonpolar, they don't interact in this way. The last section that I have here is on pH. pH has to do with the amount of hydrogen ions in a solution. And this is the pH scale. Now, of course, read your notes, read the book on the pH scale, but of primary importance is to understand the numbers on the scale. Seven is neutral, pure water is neutral. Numbers below seven are acidic on the pH scale and numbers above seven are basic or alkaline on the pH scale. Examples are provided in your book. Also details of the fact that you have more hydrogen ions over here. These are actually exponents, by the way. This is a logarithmic scale, not a linear scale. And that concludes our brief review of chapter two.